So I'm back in my room once again and I'm about to head to bed because I have another day at work tomorrow, one more day before, I can call it the weekends, but I have to work on weekends as well so it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Everybody at the workplace who is an associate librarian has to work on the weekends, every alternate week, that is. I go through days where I feel as if I've forgotten what it is to want to die. And I was feeling a bit of that all through Christmas Eve until the end of the year. The end of 2018, that is. And I felt alive and happy even. And I stopped Googling, searching methods and how, how to kill myself and how to run away and die quietly and never be found. I stopped researching on that for a while. And it felt good. It felt good to forget for a bit that, you know, this is what it feels like. I, I can't imagine what it's like not to be depressed. I really can't. Because I've just been in this for so long that it's the only way I know how to see my life. It's the only way I know how to understand the world around me. It seems like a lot of people haven't, or if they do, it's, you know, we all go through it differently and in our own unique ways. So I have submitted my leave request and I am looking to run away somewhere. And if I don't feel like coming back, then I won't take the flight home. And I'll just stay there until I find some way to put an end to my life. Or I don't know, just run away and hope I disappear into another dimension. Or I don't know, go down a mysterious hole somewhere and just, you know, end up in Wonderland or something. <laughs> yeah, a girl can dream. Work is okay. The responsibilities are piling up. And deep down inside, I think I know I can handle it. I know that public speaking is a huge part of this job. And that I'll always be terrified and that I'll never get used to it. And I think the most... Um, the funniest thing was uh, just, I think yesterday I was at a talk for parents at this particular school because the library was um, um, supposed to, to deliver a short segment, not really that short, it was about an hour long, so I will be expected to deliver this segment on my own at some point in this job, but not so soon. And um, so, during the parents' talk, uh, there were also teachers around, and the teachers had to talk about their subjects. And I think there was one teacher in particular who was so nervous about having to speak to the parents. And it was very funny. She was very endearing. And I could just, you know, understand that sort of fear. And I realized that it's common, it's natural, it's a normal thing to feel a bit. Well, not a bit in my case, to feel absolutely terrified in front of an audience. And now I don't think this is a feeling that I will get used to. So I will... I am thinking of leaving at some point. I am thinking of leaving this job at some point because... I mean... If I do plan to live long enough until then... Um, the ultimate goal is to be able to join the teaching service 
because I don't think I've ever done anything that I've enjoyed as much as that brief part-time stint I had tutoring those kids. But I also wonder if the reason why I enjoyed it because, was precisely because it was part-time and there were no real commitments and the tuition setting is completely, completely different from the school setting and so there's a lot of that that I'm not sure about. But yeah, I'm just going to try again. And if I do get in this time, I will leave this current job and move on to that. Because it's hard to get a department transfer. Somehow when I said I wanted to work with children and teenagers, I, I don't know. I wasn't expecting to, to have so much public speaking involved. Uh, in, in this role. I mean, you would assume that the job title alone, librarian, would mean that you are doing something more behind the scenes, more routine, but that's not the case. I was telling a colleague of mine today that actually being something like a bus driver would be the ideal job for me. I don't have to interact with anyone, and it is very routine. So I don't know, I'm looking for a job that's routine and pays enough for me to get by, something like that. So we'll see how that goes. But that's if I have any career ambition at all. For a period of time I was really passionate about trying again to enter the teaching service. But these days I'm just... <laughs> what is that? I'm just really sapped of motivation. I can't. <coughs> I'll try not to cry again. I can't think of any other job that I could do, given my limited skill set. <laughs> As an arts major, I don't take away any hard skills at all. I'm not particularly talented in anything. I enjoy writing, but I don't know if I would call myself skilled. Um, I don't know if I would call myself <laughs> a skilled writer. And um, I've given up all hopes and dreams in that. I'm content just writing one trashy fanfic after another content with that. I no longer care about, you know, having a book on a shelf somewhere. It doesn't really matter to me anymore. So I've lost all of that. I've lost everything. I always think about I keep thinking about what Courtney Love says to Kurt Cobain when she's reading out her suicide note she's like well f fucking hell Kurt like just don't be a rock star that depresses the hell out of you something like that <laughs> yeah so I'm thinking about it you know a bit Presses the hell out of me, then it's okay. Then and don't be, don't be this responsible adult who's trying to stay afloat in a full-time job. You know, have to, you know, just don't look for something else. Look for something that still pays. And. You know, it's still somewhat up your alley. But I can't think of anything. <laughs> no. I've just stopped thinking of solutions. Or even if I do, I don't 
really want to act on them at all. I don't really think about acting on them. I don't care enough to act on them. I don't care enough about courage or resilience or kindness or just ambition even, I don't, you know, I don't care anymore, I don't care about accumulating knowledge, I've essentially stopped caring about the main values of sorts for the four Hogwarts houses, stop caring about all of that. And uh, yeah, it feels if I, uh, it's like that book by Osamu Dazai. I feel as if I'm no longer human. I've been so estranged and so detached from my own humanity, my own ability to connect with people. The more I talk to them, the more I discover that we are so different. And we're so distant as well. I see text messages going unanswered. People just not finding time to talk to you anymore. People leaving for, I don't know, greater heights, greener pastures, less depressing friends. <laughs> whole host of things. I see, I start to nitpick on the little things I start to think about. How they don't, for instance, um, how they... How they talk. How they think. The things they say, it starts, it all starts to annoy me so much. I see, I uncover something so grotesque about them, the more I get to know them. Can't handle the reality of people sometimes, but yet a part of me craves it. Part of me is so curious about human decadence, but at the same time I reject it slightest hint of it in a person that I know someone I know personally I just reject it you know can't deal with it I don't know what that makes me and I'm no saint myself it's just like it's not running out of my nose again I always look fucking fucking ugly in all these video log entries, but I guess once again that was the point, because I, like I said, I remember seeing a couple of these videos on depression and these girls just have makeup on and everything, and I'm just, I'm sure some depressed people look that way, but the other half kind of look this way, <laughs> whatever this is. I'm tired of being in my own body, I'm tired of seeing my own face, I look at it and I just want to slap it so hard. I want to crawl out of my own skin. I want to beat myself up so badly. I wish I could push some kind of self-destruct button and watch myself get blown to pieces. I want nothing at all to do with this body. I think I feel, I always feel so trapped. So trapped in, with these limbs and this hair and this face and this voice. And I can't do anything about it, I can't change it unless I kill myself, that's the only way I can be free of it, free of me. All this being said, and I still, I'm sorry, give me a second. So, 
having said all that, I still feel guilty. I still feel guilty feeling these things because like one time when I got really honest with my mother about what was going on and with the self-esteem thing and I told her I just didn't like the way I looked and like the fact that I felt that hyperhidrosis made my body so disgusting. I'm like this sweaty creature. I'm always melting in the heat. It's disgusting. I hate it. I hate my own skin. I hate the way my body reacts to any sort of environment. I hate it. I think it's disgusting. I hate my bone structure. I think it's it's awful. There's just no there's really no structure to it at all. I hate my shoulders especially. The entire upper half of my body is a fucking joke. A fucking disproportionate joke. So I was telling her all these things and hate my skin as well. Don't let me start, I will just continue, so I'm gonna stop here before I keep going on. I was telling her all these things, and she said, when I was younger, <laughs> before you were born, I prayed to God and I had this list of physical traits and qualities that I wanted you to have. And broad shoulders was one of them, because she's always admired the models from the 90s. Or else in me, I just think it looks funny. It's just... I don't know. I think what hurts most is that sometimes I feel that in rejecting this body, I am rejecting my mother. But all I want to say is that I am not. It wasn't up to her what kind of genes I would have, how all this would turn out. It was never up to her. And so I just hope she knows that I don't, I don't, um, it's, it's not that I rejected her or anything, I never did. I just... It's not her fault that it was me, that this combination, that the result of... Um, <laughs> the result of... I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, I can't really think. Sorry that she wanted a family and the person that ha <laughs> got added to it was me. This exact combination or configuration, if you must, I think. Well, actually, there's a difference, I don't know, but configuration sounds better. This exact configuration. Sorry. This wasn't something that she could control, so I'm not rejecting her if I reject my own life, my own birth, my own being. I hope she knows it's not because I am rejecting her, not because she did anything particularly wrong, because these some, some of these things are beyond her control. I had a couple of other things to say, but I've since completely forgotten them. <laughs> I think... What I wanted to say was I don't... I don't think there's ever any getting out of this. I keep waiting. I keep doing things to make myself feel brighter as a person. I try to exercise because apparently that releases 
positive hormones or something. Endorphins, was it, in your head? And, uh, I try all of that. I try to keep myself occupied. That I don't like work. I don't know who likes work, but I tend to agonize and stress over it. So I am like the world's most unproductive workaholic, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> I don't like it, but I still end up doing a lot of it and torturing myself with it. I've gotta go. Bye.